morning. Welcome to worship at Wesley United Methodist Church. How many of you have ever experienced a miracle? How many would you say you've experienced some kind of a miracle in your life? Yeah, a miracle is we would define as something happening that is beyond ourselves, right? It took something else, someone else's involvement to pull that off because we could never do that on our own. You know, God is still in the business of doing miracles. And the most exciting news is that God wants to use you to be a miracle in someone else's life. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. So Lord, as we gather to praise you today, we pray that you would inhabit the praises of your people. Enthrone yourself on our praise. Draw us close to yourself. Teach us something about you and about ourselves, that we might live more fully in you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Would you stand? Let's worship the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Listen to the promise of Scripture from Matthew 12 as Jesus quotes the prophet Isaiah. Look at my servant, whom I have chosen. He is my beloved, who pleases me. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not fight or shout 
or raise his voice in public. He will not crush the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle. Finally, he will cause justice to be victorious, and his name will be the hope of all the world. Today, we light this candle as a symbol of Christ who is our hope. Let's pray. Faithful God, out of darkness you bring light. Out of sorrow you bring joy. Out of despair you bring hope. Renew our hope today that we may work toward Christ's advent of peace among all nations. In the strong name of our risen Savior Jesus, amen. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. And I hope that this Advent is a great time uh, for all of you as we prepare for the coming of the Lord uh, on Christmas. Well, my name is Bob Swicker, and I'm the pastor here. I want to welcome you to worship today. Uh, if you're visiting here for the very first time, we want to extend a very warm welcome to you. We hope that you'll all take a few moments to sign the uh, Making Connection card, because uh, that's our way of knowing that you're here today with us. It's also a good way of letting us know if there are things that are going on in your life that you'd like us to know about um, or uh, information that you would like uh, about the church. So if there are boxes that apply, um, please check those that apply. Uh, also, just a few announcements today. Uh, first off, I want to give you an update on our pledge drive. Uh, as many of you know, um, Consecration Sunday is a day that we look forward to 2017 and the ministry that's going to be happening in 2017. Uh, most of you might have received a card like this in the mail. And it's an opportunity just to say, uh, Lord, you know, what do you want to give through us to the ministry of Wesley in 2017? And uh, if you didn't have a chance to turn in your card, uh, we would certainly welcome that. You could put it in the offering plate any Sunday. You can bring it in to the church office as you're passing by. You can mail it in to the church office. Uh, I will give you an update as to where we are currently. Um, currently... The uh, pledges for, uh, as of November 18th, uh, we had 68 pledges for a total of $261,028. Last year, uh, at the end of November, on November 30th, we had 108 pledges for $373,000. Uh, what that means is that we are currently about $113,000 behind where we were at this point last year. So, if you haven't had a chance to turn in a pledge card, we would welcome that because what that amounts to is ministry, uh, the ministry that happens in and through the church. Uh, if you didn't bring one with you and you want one, there are some there in the pew backs, uh, but I just wanted to update you on where we stood uh, to give you a pretty clear picture about that. Uh, there are several other announcements in your bulletin that you'll want to know about. Um, one of the things that's coming up, as you heard uh, Bryce and Kalia read uh, the liturgy for the, ad, the lighting of the Advent wreath, every week as we move closer to Christmas, we're going to light another candle uh, reminding us. And so if you would like to do that uh, by yourself or with a friend or with a family member or all your family, 
uh, there's a sign-up sheet out in the hall for the different Sundays and the different worship services, 8.30 uh, and, and 10.45, and on Christmas Eve we'll do it too. So if you would like to do that, please stop by our information area right outside these doors and to the right, and you can sign up uh, for that. Uh, also, you'll, need, you'll notice that uh, we have lessons and carols coming up. The EIU is putting that on on Friday, December 9th. Uh, that's going to be at 7.30 p.m. in this very room. And so we're excited about that. Also, the Madrigal Feast uh, that the choir is putting on is coming up uh, on the 17th at 6 p.m. If you would like to get tickets for that Madrigal Feast, there's a table set up down in the Fellowship Hall right by the parlor. And you can get your tickets for that. It's going to be a, a great evening. Uh, other announcements that you'll find uh, in your sheet there are about music, possibility, possible ways to be involved uh, musically in the church. Uh, also, if you're leaving over the winter months, uh, there's an announcement there for you. Uh, Stephen ministers are available, and this is a great time of the year to uh, be reminded of that. You can find an announcement about that. And uh, also, you can read about our mission focus for the month of November and how we want to be a blessing um, in, in that mission. So you can find all those things um, in your bulletin. Now, can I invite you up, Cindy? And, um, and Carolyn Adkins, our chair of Staff Parish. Um, come on up here. So most of you know Cindy Ebinger. She is our, uh, our director of children's ministries here at the church. And uh, recently, Cindy came to uh, tell me that she was uh, receiving a promotion. And because of the promotion that she was receiving, she was going to be resigning from her position here at the church. Uh, the promotion was to full-time grandmother and, and not children's ministry director. And, uh, and so, um, you know, it, it deeply uh, saddens us to see you leave as children's coordinator. Uh, we rejoice with you that you get to be full-time grandmother and all the, all the fun duties that that entails. Uh, but we thought we would invite Cindy up for uh, a couple of reasons. One is, um, she's just done such a great job with children's ministry, uh, as you all know. And so um, we thought we'd take a moment. Just would you say thank you uh, to Cindy for all the work that she's done? If we can embarrass you. And um, you, you'll be seeing, um, you know, we'll be advertising for, for the position and, and we'll need to replace uh, Cindy, even though there's not a replacement for Cindy uh, in everything that she has done around the church. I will hasten to add, uh, this doesn't mean that Cindy's going anywhere. Cindy and Warren are still here. They're still involved in ministry at Wesley, and for that we are deeply grateful. Um, but we did, we got a cake, uh, and uh, it's down in the fellowship hall, so in between services, if you could stop by, grab some cake, say thanks to Cindy, and um, and I'm going to pray. I want to pray for her. I want to thank God for you and for what God's going to open up in your life right now. So if you join me, would you pray? Lord, thank you so much for this woman. Thank you for the ministry that she has given to Charleston Wesley, for the children's lives that have been forever altered because of her faithful uh, work. And God... As she opens up a new chapter in her life uh, as full-time grandmother, we pray your blessing on that stage of life as well. We know that you will continue to use her in powerful ways around this church. We're grateful for that. But Lord, we ask your blessing to continue to be upon her and Warren and their family. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you thank her again for all that she's given? Thank you. are always bittersweet, right? To celebrate, but to, to also mourn. So, um, well, I want to invite our young friends to come forward as we sing this hymn, Into My Heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Let's sing it twice through, first stanza. Into my heart. Into my heart, 
come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Well, good morning. I'm hearing some amazing stories up here. Well, what do you guys think of when you think of Christmas? What comes to mind when you think of Christmas? Yeah. Cheer and joy. Good. What do you think of? Yes. Family. Or jumping around. <laughs> That's exciting. Anyone else? Well, I'm glad that you said Jesus, too, because a lot of times we see all the pretty lights in the stores about a month ago are already filled with Christmas <laughs> things, and there's presents, and there's so much excitement around Christmas, right? But we have to always remember that all those pretty things are a lot of fun, but they're not the reason that we're celebrating Christmas. And Jesus came to earth. God sent Jesus to earth. And that's the reason, like you said, that's the reason that we celebrate Christmas. It's the first, it's the most beautiful miracle that God sent his son through a human being like you and me. And sent his son through somebody named Mary so that we could have a savior here on this planet, in this world. And that is such a huge miracle. Now, what is a miracle? Um, it's like you want it to happen, but you don't think it will ever happen. But then it becomes a miracle because it does happen. I love that. That's very good. It is so hard to explain that. But that was well done. I like that. A miracle is something that we can't do by ourselves, right? It's un You said unexpected. I like that. But when we invite Jesus into our heart, which we just sang about, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. We just sang those words in that chorus we just sang. And when we invite Jesus into our heart, we can be a part of beautiful miracles. And they're happening all around us. If we pay attention, do you remember the Christmas carol or do you know the Christmas carol? Do you, do you see what I see or do you hear what I hear? we got to see and hear and pay attention every day to, to see what God is doing. And when we see what he's doing, we can jump in and join in to the most cool miracles ever. And I was trying to think of what around us do we see at Christmas time to help us remember to pay attention. And I thought, okay, well, stars. Do you guys see a star anywhere in here? Yeah. Yeah. On the Christmas tree, yeah. How many of you do, you, do any of you put stars on the top of your Christmas tree? So, yeah. So, do we. so if you think, if you keep your eyes open this Christmas, and if sometimes we forget, right? We get busy, we're playing with our friends, we forget that Jesus is living in our heart and that we want to worship him, live for him, love him, and love others through with his help. And that's a miracle too, isn't it? And so we, I was thinking we could, every time we see a star, maybe it's when you look outside at night and you see the stars in the sky. Whatever star you see, let that be a reminder. Oh, yeah, I want to pay attention to the miracles around me and see how I can join in them. And with God's help, we can do amazing things, but only with his help, right? With his power in our lives. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much that you are a miracle here on this earth. Thank you so much that we are allowed to be your children and we can participate in your miracles, that we can choose to live with you each day. And with that, we have extra strength from you that can guide us and lead us through all kinds of things. And we just praise you and thank you for that. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 
As the ushers prepare to receive our morning offering, I want to remind you that every week we have an opportunity to bring our tithes, gifts, and offerings to God. And the reason that we do that, it's not only an act of worship, but it's a way of empowering ministry in and through Wesley. So may God bless you as we bring our tithes, gifts, and offerings. Gracious and loving God, we do thank you for the gift of this day, and we thank you for the gift of being able to be stewards of what is yours. It's all yours. And when we bring these gifts to you, Lord, we pray that you would use them for the furthering of your kingdom on this earth. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing here at Wesley. We thank you for the ministries that you're placing before us, and we're, thank we're thankful, Lord, for all the lives that have been touched 
because of the ministry that's going on. Lord, we know that there are things that are happening in people's lives that we will only discover on the other side of heaven. But Lord, we do invite your Holy Spirit to be at work among us to continue to do that which only you can do. God, only you can change a human heart. We can try and we can try, but only you can change the human heart. And God, we offer that to you in these moments. We offer you our hearts and we pray that you would transform them. That we would see the world through the eyes of Jesus and that we would respond to the world through the hands and feet of Jesus. Lord, our world is in such need of your grace and your mercy and your compassion and your justice. So we pray that you would continue to use us. We pray for the people in Korea, the people in the Middle East, the people all around the world that today are longing for your spirit of peace to show up. God, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Canton, Illinois, as they continue to rebuild after the explosion of of the gas lines there. Lord, we pray for the people of Cuba. And we pray for those all around the world who are living on a daily basis with violence and hate and division. Lord, we need your healing. And we pray that it would begin even today as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who is said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her.
girls. How beautiful. Well, as we prepare to hear the, the word this morning, I want to invite you, and maybe this is uh, all new to you. I don't know if you've ever done this chorus or not, but it's called Prepare the Way of the Lord. And since that is the entire theme of Advent, uh, let's, I want to invite you to sing it with me if you would. Uh, Harry, if you play through it once, and then we'll just sing it through once. We'll do that. God, as we turn to your word, we ask that you'd write your word upon our hearts and weave your word into the fabric of our souls. And we pray it all in the strong name of our risen Savior, Jesus. Amen. I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. Anybody have a good Thanksgiving? Great Thanksgiving? Good. Have some turkey or something, and uh, now we're all taking up uh, dieting plans and exercise regimens. Right? Uh, new, newfound things. Yeah, it, it happens. And now our, our focus turns toward Christmas, right? And I don't know what Christmas is like. Maybe you're looking forward to some of the traditions that you have around Christmas. Uh, I, maybe you're already thinking about a list that you will share with your family uh, about what maybe some things that you might want for Christmas. Um, now, I have a particular fascination with different, the different ways there are to make coffee. I don't know if you're aware of this, but there are multiple ways that one can make coffee. Um, for example, I, I decided to do the um, check one day and I discovered that I could make coffee seven ways uh, in our household. Um, of course, there's the automatic drip. That just goes without saying, right? You got, you got the automatic drip. Um, there's also the campfire coffee. Some of you have had some campfire coffee. Now that also could double as a percolator because some of those campfire pots are made to kind of percolate. Um, there's also the Italian press. The Italian press is the one that looks like this. And the, the, as the water gets hot, it forces its way up through finely ground coffee uh, and, and deposits in the top of that unit. Uh, then there, of course, there's the French press, uh, which you just pour the hot water on the grounds and then you press the plunger and that takes it down and, and you know, there's other uh, ways. There's cold brew. Um, you know, you can cold brew coffee. Um, any, any cold brew fans here? Of course. Um, cold brew with a little cream and sugar. It's perfect. Uh, there's espresso. You can make espresso coffee. There's so many different ways to make coffee, right? None of, are, are any of you coffee drinkers? Shake your head if you're a coffee drinker. Okay, good. Well, I'm in good company here. Um, here's the thing. There are a whole lot of different ways and, uh, to make coffee. And one of our favorite stories around our house is that um, one, one night, right after I had received my first French press, uh, Josh was going to pray at the dinner table. And the prayer went something like this. Dear Jesus, help Daddy not to get any more coffee makers. Now, the truth is, um, I could make coffee the same way every day of my life. But if I did, I might just start thinking that coffee was not just about coffee, but how I made it. You see what I mean? If I make coffee from a drip coffee pot every day, then if I don't have a drip coffee pot or if I don't have a filter, then maybe I think that I can't make coffee that day because that's the only way I know how to make coffee. But if, there, if, I, if I lose sight of the fact that there are the, all these multiple ways and they're all really fun, and they, they all produce a different tasting kind of coffee, then I'll lose sight of the fact that there's all these things available to me. Today we're starting this new series called 
a different kind of Christmas. And the series is loosely based on a, a teaching of Mike Slaughter. Mike Slaughter did a book. Mike Slaughter is the pastor of uh, Ginghamsburg United Methodist Church in Tip City, Ohio. And uh, he created this book called A Different Kind of Christmas. And so we're offering this, and a lot of the adult uh, Sunday schools are, are doing this very study. So if you've never been involved in an adult Sunday school, this is a great time to jump in, and you'll be doing this study called A Different Kind of Christmas. And our hope is that um, you are a part of this, and our hope is that you have a different kind of Christmas than maybe you've ever had before. Here's what I know. Sometimes, when we're involved in doing something a certain way, long enough, it's possible to think that what we're doing is about what we're doing, and we forget why we do it. Maybe you have some traditions in your house that you always do that, right? And you just you do it because you always have done it. And maybe over time we lose sight of why we started doing this in the first place. And again, my prayer for you is that this Christmas is different. That you have a different kind of Christmas. You see, Advent is a time that we remember the waiting of the coming of Jesus into this world. That's why we celebrate Christmas, right? Jesus was born a Palestinian Jew into a community of marginalized, oppressed people. He spent his first years as a refugee in Africa, in Egypt, on the continent of Africa. He was part of a working class family. He identified with the weak and the powerless. His name was Emmanuel, which means God with us. And in Jesus, we not only see the face of God, we not only see what the heart of God looks like as we see the adult Jesus walking this earth, but in Jesus, we also see who you and I were created to be. Think of that. Jesus isn't just some cute little baby that we put in the nativity scene so that we can say, oh, isn't baby Jesus cute? What we see in the person of Jesus is not only the heart of God, but the person that God created you and I to be. That's why Jesus is so important during Christmas. It's a big deal. It's a really big deal. And it's worth wrapping our minds around, especially this time of year, because if we just do Christmas the same as we always do it, and we somehow miss that greater story, we're going to miss everything. Literally everything about Christmas. And we can end up confusing Santa with God. Now, uh, obviously not literally, but certainly um, we can confuse that in function, right? When we view God as one to whom we bring our list of wishes, and we just wait for God to answer our wish list under the, the tree of our own experiences, if we get to that point, and we think that God is just like a big Santa in the sky. We miss the point. Consumerism and faith, they get mixed up this time of year. And the real meaning of Christmas gets lost. The truth is that God came to this earth to reveal the greatest miracle ever. God in the flesh. Think of that. God in the flesh. You've heard stories. You've, you've heard the prophets speak for God. But you don't know what God looks like. You don't know how God would act if God were to show up today in the flesh. And so in the person of Jesus, we see the heart of God. And so this first week, I just want to spend a few minutes inviting you to participate in what could be the miracle on 4th Street. Any of you like the movie, Miracle on 34th? There could be a miracle on 4th Street right here in Charleston. If we're open to experience the miracle. But in order to, to, to be open to a miracle, we have to be looking for it. We have to have eyes to see, right? Even when the disciples saw uh, and, and others saw the miracles that Jesus was performing, some of them were simply observing. They weren't looking. You know the difference? 
Sometimes we observe the things that go on around us. Other times we are looking for what might be in front of us. Sometimes we look for the same things at Christmas time. We look to repeat the same traditions. We, we hope to get the same results by doing the same traditions that we've always done. Sometimes that happens and sometimes it doesn't. But I guess my question is, this Christmas, will you actively seek a miracle from God? Will you actively seek to be a part of a miracle? Or will you passively observe Christmas as it comes and goes again? Because if you're passively observing, you may miss what God wants to do in and through you. So, what's this miracle that we keep talking about? What is a miracle? Well, uh, one, one uh, online dictionary says, a surprising and welcome event that's not explained by natural or scientific laws and is therefore considered to be the work of a divine agency. Mike Slaughter uses this, uh, trans- this uh, definition. A visible interruption of the laws of nature understood only by the divine intervention and often accompanied by a miracle worker. Often accompanied by a miracle worker. You see, when God wants to do something in the world, He chooses to do that through people like you and me. And whenever we participate with God, we can help birth a miracle in someone else's life with God's help, right? Now you say, well, I don't feel qualified to bring a miracle into this world. Well, good. You're in good company. Because all the people that God chose all through time we're never really qualified to do that. Think about Moses. Think about David. You Think about Elizabeth. Think about Mary. These are unqualified people, but people that God chose to use to bring a miracle. And through these ordinary people, God brings extraordinary things. In order to do that, um, if we're going to experience this miracle, the first thing we'll have to have is faith, Right? Faith is the, is, the, is the doorway through which miracles happen. And I don't know where you are today in your faith. I don't know if you've ever invited Christ to be the leader of your life, to be your Savior. I don't know if you've ever invited God to reveal God's self in such a way that it would, it, it would um, rattle your cage, so to speak. But I do know that without faith it is impossible to see God. And so faith is the doorway through which we are open to the miracles of God And if you've never opened that door, then today is a great day to do just that. Invite Christ into your life. Ask Him to save you. Ask Him to to renovate you from the inside out. It begins with faith. Once you make that step, once you make that step of faith, you'll notice a few things about the miracle. First is, there's always a charge. There's always a charge. The angel comes to Mary and presents a charge to Mary. You will become pregnant and you will bear a son. That's the charge that's given to Mary. Have you received a charge? I'm guessing you have. Maybe your parents gave you the charge to take out the trash. Or they gave you the charge to take care of the pets. That was your chore that you had to do. That was the charge your parents gave you for your chores, right? Or, or maybe it was a teacher that charged you to have an assignment done by a certain date, right? That is a particular charge. Or maybe it was a principal charging your class to make a difference in the world as you go forth from high school. Or maybe it's a doctor who charges you to a new way of living. You understand that there is a charge. We all have received these from various places. God gives us a charge as well, right? Jesus has already given us a charge. In fact, more than one. Go ye therefore into all the world to make disciples baptizing them and to teach them to obey everything that I've commanded you. That's a charge that Jesus has given us. There's another charge that Jesus gave us in John 13. Love one another. It is the charge that Christ has given us. 
So whenever a miracle is going to be birthed, it begins with a charge. To engage in a ministry. I don't know what charge God has for you, but I know that God still offers charges to each one of us to birth a ministry, to do something that no one else is doing. And I don't know what it is, what the, what the ministry is at Wesley that has to happen, that needs to happen, but maybe God right now is birthing a charge in your heart that you will be the one to bring that ministry to Wesley. If you will hear the charge, then a miracle might just happen. It's not all dependent on you. You can't do this by yourself. It's dependent upon the Spirit of God working within you. But it begins with a charge. Along with that charge will come clarity. This is the second part of uh, birthing a miracle. There will be clarity that comes away. You say, I don't even, I have this idea, I don't even know what to do. Guess what? Keep praying for it because God will bring clarity. Did you catch the angel talking to Mary? You will give birth to, not a baby, a son. It's clear. It's going to be a son. And you're going to name him Jesus. Uh, let me be clear. The, he has a name. It's Yeshua. It comes from the root word of salvation because He's going to save His people. It's, it becomes clearer with time to Mary. When God invites us to be the miracle for someone, it begins with not only this inner charge of an idea, but over time God will bring clarity. And the, the ideas that we have will come into focus with how we can do just that. You know, Mary had no idea of what it would be like to give birth to a baby. She was a teenager in her teens. This is not an experience that she had had. But the angel gave her a, enough clarity that Mary pondered these things in her heart and continued to do that. I believe that God gives us God-sized dreams so that we can, we can carry out the dream of loving and serving God in so many different ways. But it doesn't just end with a charge and clarity. It all comes down to a choice that we must make, right? Mary had a choice to make. Here's the plan, Mary. Here's greater clarity, Mary. You're going you're gonna to become pregnant and it's the Spirit of God is going to overshadow you. That's how it's going to happen. And you're going to name Him Jesus. But there's still a choice that has to be made by Mary, right? The choice is hers to make. And the choice is yours. And it's mine to make whenever we sense the charge of God to, to be in ministry in some way. Do you know how Mary responds? you know what her choice was? Do you remember? Let it be. Let it be with me according to what you said. That's her choice. She's all in. I don't have all the answers. I'm all in. Let it be. God, if you're doing this, I don't ever want to get in the way. Let it be. God, if it's going to happen, bring it to pass. I don't know how, but you can do it. Let it be with me, as you have said. God plants seeds of miracles in hearts of available people who are willing to act on God's vision. Think of that statement. God plants seeds of miracles in the hearts of available people who are willing to act on God's vision. I want to close with this. I'll show you this little clip. Um, here's, this is in Liverpool, and uh, this, there's a, a, a guy, you know, husking on the street, playing his guitar. This man begins to dance. Watch what happens. Dance like no one's watching. Something in him moves, right? And he decides to dance. But that's not the miracle. Watch what happens. Ah, the first joiner. And then the second joiner. 
and then a third, and then a fourth. Isn't that amazing? Did you see the miracle? The miracle is that the others joined in the dance. And God is putting a miracle. He's inviting us to be flesh on a miracle in people's lives all around us. Just as Jesus was the miracle of God in the flesh, God with skin on, whenever we enter into someone's life and bring blessing, we can be part of the miracle that God wants to bring into people's lives. So I'm going to invite the kids up. They're going to close with a a song, and then we're going to sing a song called Lord of the Dance. But as they're coming, let me pray. Gracious God, You've given a charge to each of us to know You and to make You known and to bless others in Christ's name. Lord, we thank You for the miracle that You put on flesh and became human so that we could see You. May that miracle continue in Jesus' name. Amen. Faith arise in spite of what I see, Lord. I believe the help my unbelief I choose to trust you. No matter what I feel, let faith arise. Let faith arise. My champion, not dead, he is alive. Oh, and he already knows my every Surely he will come and rescue me.
invite you to stand as we respond to this word and the word in song. And If you would join me in this morning prayer, let's pray it together. Gracious and loving God, as we are making preparations in our homes to make them look more festive for our families and friends, we ask that you would give us the ability to make preparations in our hearts so that you might use us to be a miracle to someone else. Help us to hear the story of your coming into this world afresh. Fill our hearts with joy that we might truly celebrate you through this season. As we encounter your word, sing the carols, and serve others in your name, give us grace to join the miracle of sharing your grace with others through this season. Forgive us when we miss the true meaning of the season. Draw us near, fill us with your spirit, and use us to share your grace in this season. In Jesus' name, amen.
that's the charge, isn't it? The charge is to go forth dancing, following the lead of your Creator, allowing God's grace to fill you to the overflowing so that it flows out of you into others' lives. Because when other people come into contact with the grace and the love and the mercy and the compassion of Jesus, it is a miracle. And God wants to use each one of you to do it. So go to share the miracle. Amen? Have a great week.